In the previous video, I introduced you to the concept of borrow in Rust. In this video, I want to focus on functions, how the borrow rules apply to functions. So as a review, let's start with ownership. Here I have a string called s, and then I have another function called take. Take will take in the string as input and then print it out. After this function is called, the ownership of the string s has transferred. So now back inside the main function, if you try to print this, the code will not compile. So that is the review of ownership. Now let's focus on borrow and functions, how the borrow rules affect functions and what inputs and outputs we can pass. Let's start with immutable borrows. As a quick reminder, what borrow means is that it doesn't take ownership. It only borrows the value. So again, let's start with a string guess. And then let's create a function that will borrow. We'll use this example first. And then we'll rename this to borrow. Also, let's change what it prints. Let's say borrow s. Okay, and then back inside here, remember that to borrow, we had to create a reference. For example, ampersand s. So the function signature of this borrow function, the input will be a reference to a string. Now let's call this function borrow. Over here, let's say borrow. The code compiles, so far so good. Let's now try to print this value s. And notice that the code still compiles. Contrast this to the first example, when we try to print s, it did not compile since the ownership has transferred. In this case, we pass a reference to the function borrow, and then afterwards we can print the original string. Let's execute the code. I'll type cargo run dash dash bin borrow func. And then we have the logs, borrow rust, and then prints out rust. So that's a basic example, but before we move on, I want to show you one other thing. Over here, instead of string, we can say str. Now notice over here, the type of this variable is a string. So when we take the reference of the string, the type should be a reference to a string and not reference to a str. So why does this code still work? Why does it still compile? The reason is Rust is smart enough to convert between a reference to a string and a reference to a str. So this is why the code still compiles. Okay, moving on. Let's modify this example and then create an example for a mutable borrow. So let's say that mute s. And then let's create a function called borrow mute. The function will mutate the original string by taking a mutable reference to the string. And then afterwards, we'll print the original string. I see some errors, but first let's create a function called borrow mute. I'll copy the previous example and then call this borrow mute. For the input, it's going to take in a mutable reference. So this will be mute. Since we're modifying a string, I'll change this to a string. Inside, we'll modify this string. Let's say s.push str. We'll put a crab emoji. Okay, so here's a function. Let's go back over here. The reference that we'll need to pass is a mutable reference. Save the file and the code compiles. Let's execute the code. We see the string, Rust, followed by the emoji of a crab. Notice what happened here. It's similar to the previous example. The string s, a reference to a string s, was passed to a function. It did not take ownership. Afterwards, we were able to print this. For the last part of this video, I'll show you an example of creating a function that takes ownership. We will modify it into a function that returns ownership. And then afterwards, finally, we will modify that function into a function that borrows. So let's start with a function that takes ownership. For this example, let's use this. So here's the function that takes ownership. And let's also create a function, some other function. Let's call this print ln. What it's going to do is it's going to take the string and then it's going to print the length of the string. Going back, let's copy this and then paste it here. And then say the function name print length. Then let's say length is equal to s.length. So here's a function that transfers the ownership of string. And again, as a reminder, if you try to print this afterwards, after calling the function print length, the code will not compile. Let's now create a new version of this function that will return the ownership. Going back up, we'll start with this function, the function that takes in ownership. How will we return ownership? Well, we can simply return the same string. And then over here, say that we're going to return a string. And then let's rename this as print length return ownership. Now let's call this function. So again, we'll initialize a string and then call the function print then return ownership. Since it's going to be returning a string, let's assign this to a variable. We'll use the same name, let s. Call the function, it takes ownership. 
the function returns a string, so we assign it to a string. And then let's print, try to print this. Save the file, and the code compiles. Let's also run this code. Okay, and then here it is, length is equal to 4, and then length is equal to 4, followed by Rust. The last two logs that you saw in the terminal came from these two line of code. And you may be thinking that this way of handling ownership, returning ownership, is awkward to use. And you are right. So that is why you'll modify the function to borrow instead of return ownership. So again, let's start with the string guess. And then we'll call function. Let's call this function print then borrow. To borrow, we'll need to pass in a reference. So we'll pass in a reference to a string. And then going back up, let's copy this function and then paste it here. We'll rename this as print length borrow. It's going to take in a reference to a string. And again, Rust is smart enough to convert a reference to a string to a reference to a SDR. So here we can pass in reference to a SDR. The benefit of this is that now this function can take in a both the reference to a string and a reference to a string slice. And let's say borrow length. So notice that this code does not return the string guess. It simply borrows the string, prints it, so the ownership did not move into this function. Okay, let's try calling this. So over here, we called the function print length borrow. It doesn't transfer ownership. And to make sure that this is the case, let's try printing the string guess afterwards. Okay, the code compiles. Let's run the code. Okay, in the code executed, borrow length is equal to 4, followed by the string rust. In this video, I showed you how the ownership and the borrowing rules apply to functions.